Richard Wolff, professor of economics in the United States and a proud Marxist, has put out a 30-minute video talking about China, which he's called the phenomenon of China. In this video, I'll talk about some of the things that he said and present quite a different perspective from the one that he's giving. First of all, a couple of things he says which I really agree with. He starts by making the point that, number one, China is very important and we should be talking about China and making the effort to understand China. And number two, discussions of China are very often over-politicized. We need more balanced discussion. Here he is. China is changing and shaking the world in ways that are going to be central to our experience for the foreseeable future. It deserves a great deal more attention than it's getting. Or to be a bit more precise, it de deserves attention that is balanced, that is trying to understand what's going on, and that is not propagandistic, painting them bad so that we in the West look better by comparison. It's a childish game, it's dangerous, and it's not what we're here to do. I think he's right to say this. Discussions about China, including in the United States and here in the UK, are very often shaped in quite unhealthy ways by geopolitical tensions. Wolf goes on to say that he wants to talk about some of the ways that China's economy is different because, he says, we should be making an effort to understand China on their own terms. We shouldn't just assume that they're doing things wrong just because they're doing things differently from what we in capitalist liberal democracies do. And again, I think he's making a good point here. I want to mention some of the things that are distinctive about China because they follow from the way they've organized their economy. Whereas in Western treatments, they are often dealt with as though they show that the Chinese are fumbling or bumbling or making mistakes. Let me give you some examples. Wolf then goes on to give his examples, but here's where we differ. I think in trying to push back on some of the prejudiced views coming from a lot of the commentary in the West, he goes a bit too far in the other direction. He winds up glossing over some really important aspects of how China has developed. That I would suggest any Marxist interested in questions about class should perhaps be asking questions about. In particular, what he says about Chinese urbanization. They have managed to move hundreds of millions of people out of the rural agricultural parts of China to the urban industrial. Modern industrialization took centuries in Europe. It took a century or two in the United States. It took 30 to 40 years in China. And they moved a larger population that was in a more backward agriculture into modern industry. A transformation that could have and should have and would have exploded other societies because of the tensions and the difficulties and the pain of social change. They managed all that to become what they are today. Again, full of mistakes along the way, of course. Dead ends, trials, errors, but achievements that have to be recognized in what has been produced at the end. This is quite interesting. When he says they've moved hundreds of millions of people out of backwards agriculture into urban industry, I'm not quite sure what he means here. He might be talking about the migrant workers from the countryside getting jobs in cities, very often in the manufacturing industries. But actually, they very often didn't have permanent rights in the cities and continued to rely partially on agriculture. This is something I've talked about in another video. I'll post the link below this one. Or maybe Wolf is wanting to refer here to people moving permanently out of their rural villages and into cities. When he says they have managed to move hundreds of millions of people, he seems to want to say that this has happened through careful socialist planning. But actually, there's a lot of research which suggests 
It wasn't top-down planning that was really driving these processes. What Wolf is missing here is that these processes of moving people off the land were, to a large extent, driven by capitalist forces inside China and by profit-making incentives. There's been lots of scholarship on this. I'll talk here about the very interesting article by the sociologist Xiao Hua Zhan. It's called Hukou Reform and Land Politics in China, Rise of a Tripartite Alliance. A hukou is a registration permit which determines where you can live. And for years in China, it determined whether you can live in urban or rural areas. Again, I have a couple of videos on this channel which talk about the hukou, and I'll post the links under this video in case you want to watch them after this. What's important here is that the real estate industry has for many years really been a driving force behind China's economic growth. And particularly after the 2008 financial crisis, China's government really got behind the real estate and construction industries. It became a really important way that Chinese policymakers kept their economy going. And this meant in particular building on lots of what was originally rural land. And this also meant that the real estate industry became very powerful and actually quite politically influential. Then added to this, there was lots of agrarian capital, that is big farm capital, that also wanted access to the rural land in China so that they could build big farms. What you then got, and this is what Xiao Hua Zhan is talking about in his article, is an alliance between real estate capital and agrarian capital and local government officials. This is partly because the officials' promotion prospects were often tied up with development in their local areas. And it's also because development projects in their areas was a way to bring in local government revenue. And also because they were quite often getting kickbacks themselves from these development deals. So this produced the tripartite alliance, as Xiao Hua Zhan calls it, of local governments, agrarian capital and real estate capital all working together. They put huge amounts of pressure on rural villagers to move off the land and out of their villages. The villagers would lose their farmland, so agrarian capital could take it over and build big farms, which was great for the agricultural corporations. And they would have to move into tower blocks, which the real estate companies were building. And that was great for the real estate companies. But it wasn't necessarily great for the villagers who were being made to move. Often they didn't really get much of a say in all this. There was often coercion involved, and there were an awful lot of protests from villagers all over China, both because often they didn't want to give up their land and because often they weren't receiving the compensation that they were entitled to. So when Wolf says, of course, there were mistakes and errors made, yes, he's right to say this. But for me, that doesn't do enough to capture the capitalist class dynamics that were driving these processes. And I guess I would say that a serious Marxist analysis of China should really be foregrounding these issues, not glossing them over using words like modernization, as I think Wolf does here. Thank you for watching.